Hi Giles, this is a follow-up video to your request for information on what parameters I used when I was collecting my data on my FX chronograph review. The only reason I'm bothering to do this is because I have got mad respect for you and your skills. I love your reviews, I love your channel, it's my favorite by far. So I can appreciate FX's concern. I know they've got a lot of money involved in this product, but uh, and it dwarfs the 200 bucks I've got involved in this product, but frankly, I consider my money just as important as theirs. And so I'll gladly take down my other review video if this one proves that the data isn't reliable. Um, I, it's the same test. It's reliable. So we'll see. But I'll gladly eat crow. I, I would love. I bought this hoping, hoping that this would work. I didn't buy this to give it a bad review. I put my money out there partially because of your review on it saying it was great and so far my results have not been great so um, with that said let's get down to it okay this is my setup or at least the setup I had that I'll be redoing again today because I don't have you know video footage of this but this is a Taipan veteran long 22 caliber it's capable of way faster velocities that I'm going to be testing but the reason I've got the hammer spring dialed way, way so far back to about 800 feet per second shooting the uh, air arms pellets is because I don't want pass through through my target back here. Now my target is just some rubber mulch. It's fairly thick. You know, 10 shots shouldn't go through it, but when you're shooting at 44 foot pounds of energy, which I usually do, you'd be surprised how quickly you can drill a hole through one of those things. Okay. The rifle is level. You can see that I've got a level on there. Well, it's basically level. Okay, the table that it's sitting on is level. And of course, the FX is sitting on some pellets and everything. It's all level. Now, the FX, I'm going to start with it. I'm going to start with it lined up with the end of the barrel here. And it's about, uh, let's see, get the camera so we can see that it's maybe a little bit okay from the muzzle opening it's about an inch and an eighth below to the top of the chronograph okay and so what i'll be doing is I'll be, i found another camera so i can do this i'll be recording the results from the caldwell chronograph on this phone the phone i'm recording on right now will show the fx data and this little Polaroid camera is going to be set up you know, somewhere over here recording the two so that you'll be able to see in real time what the results and differences are. All right, let's get to it. All right, this is test one. The crony is flush with the muzzle. Everything is level. Um, the crony is about an inch below the muzzle. Okay, so that's 10 shots. So I can't decide if this is a decent shot string or not. I mean, I know the standard deviation is really, really high, and that's probably just because my gun doesn't like being tuned this low. But if you take away the fourth shot of the FX, which is the one that I think is off when I compare it to the Caldwell, 826 feet per second from the FX is really high compared to the average it was putting out. Whereas 792 for the Caldwell is pretty close to the 797 that it was putting out. I guess my biggest concern is how the differences are bouncing around from plus 7 to negative 11 to plus 15, 34, negative 10, 9, negative 12. That, I think that's what irritates me as much as anything at, uh, with this shot string. So just out of curiosity, I shot another 10 shot shot string with the same setup with a FX chronograph one inch below again, just to see if, you know, the data compares. Okay, 
And this shot string looks a lot better. It's way more consistent. All the differences are all minus and in the general area, especially if you take away that fourth shot, which is clearly an outlier by the FX. Um, I wonder if there's something wrong with my magazine. This might be a sign that you know, there's a burr or something in that magazine right there. All right, so everything's the same. I just removed one of the pellet tins so that now it is about two inches. Cameraman and measure at the same time. So it's about two inches from the top of the crony to the muzzle. So I'm not sure exactly what to think about this data. Um, it's clear that the gun's kind of gone off regulation, so there's, you know, it's starting to spike towards the end of the shot string. Um, but even then, the velocities, you know, they're different. There's a couple, you know, plus threes, minus three, minus 12, minus 16, then at the end, it's plus two. Um, I just don't, well, this is probably clearly not the spot where the gun likes the chronograph to be. Okay, here we are at about three inches, which is about the sweet spot that I was getting in my testing yesterday. Ooh, it's liking it. Okay, this is the most important data because yesterday between three and four inches where I was was where I was getting the best data and it looks like this data is pretty good especially if you throw out that fifth shot by the FX which seems like an outlier you throw that one out and they're all within you know less than 10 feet per second and most of them are just a little bit low I would expect again it to be a little bit high but hey, consistency is all I'm really looking for here and so again, if I can tomorrow set this chronograph up three inches below the muzzle and get results that are similar to this, uh, I'll eat crow. I will admit that the FX is more reliable than I currently think. Unfortunately, I forgot to hit record on the four inch data, so I'm not going to include that here. And that's unfortunate because Yesterday at 3.75 inches is where I was getting the best data of all and so it's possible that four inches here would be even better than the three inches um, I just again didn't collect the data so I can't talk about it Okay, this is five inches below One of the reasons I forgot the four inch data is because I went and refilled the gun. I got it back on regulation and this data shows that we're back at around 800 feet per second. Um, the difference is again that fourth shot. I don't, I gotta look at my magazine for that but you know they're all pretty close. I can't complain too much there. So one of the things I noticed in my previous testing was that having tilt in the rifle didn't make as big a difference in the velocities as I thought. In fact, some of my best data was when the gun was tilted down a few degrees. So these next shot strings are going to be with the gun tilted at a seven degree angle.
So this is the best data yet. Um, finally, the FX is recording a little faster than the Caldwell, which, which you would expect because it's closer to the gun. But look at that standard deviation and the differences. It's just they're both reading very, very close. This data that I collected today, Giles, is way better than the data that I was getting when I did that review. Um, I'm still not real happy. I, someone who just buys this chronograph still is going to have a tough time figuring out what that exact perfect placement is. Um, so I'm, that's still a drawback in my opinion. But if I keep getting more data that is consistent with what I've got with this data, I'll make sure I go online and correct my review.